Good afternoon, it's Jalen Martinez, aka The Suburban Grower. I hope all is well with you guys. Um, I'm just bringing a, a, hopefully a short video to you guys um, about an update on my banana plant. This is the Chiquita banana. Uh, you can get it anywhere at your local grocery stores. And um, when I got it, it was about that big. Um, you really can't see this to scale. I hope this helps just a little bit, but it was about, as a matter of fact, that's about a five and a half, six inch leaf. I got the whole plant that big for $15 offline. Um, what I really am trying to focus the, the video on is this stuff right here. And I know you guys don't know what this is and I know it looks absolutely disgusting. But this is banana water. As you can see, I about emptied it. I got to just fill it back up with water and let it sit out in the sun. The nutrients from these bananas leach into the water. And voila, you have fertilizer for free. I told you guys in a couple of videos before that I like to take all of my organic food scraps, um, orange peels, apples, um, our kale, spinach, everything that we don't consume. Obviously, we're not taking this stuff off of our plate and putting it in a in a compost pile or anything like that because you can't put salt, sugar, anything in it. So if we have anything that goes bad or we don't get to eat in time, which we bought all of these bananas thinking we were going to eat them, and we never did. So I was like, okay, well... The key nutrients in bananas is potassium. So that's also one of the macronutrients is in, um, well, that every plant needs nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So all I do is take this stuff and apply it. I mean, it is as simple as it looks. And it literally fertilizes the plant. This little plant died off <clears throat> i had it in direct sunlight as a basically a, a seedling and i never should have done it that way but um you learn and you obviously get a chance to fight another day but uh what i wanted to let you guys know this guy's about four months in and um it's actually doing very well so well doing well now but I'm going to tell you, you, everybody says that they have their own methods and methodologies of doing what they do. I try to keep store-bought fertilizer out of my food because at some point in time, probably won't be this year, but next summer, I'd imagine this guy will have bananas on it if I can. I'm going to do everything I can to keep it alive, but it has to go through that process of rooting and getting uh getting in i'm gonna keep this guy potted because banana plants are as you can see beautiful they're beautiful ornamental plants um a lot of people grow these indoors in their houses um all they do is leave like a little window crack a lot of times i see places that say they need a whole lot of sun and this that and other well the issue for me with sun being in texas is Yes, sun, the sun is abundant here, but when it all boils down to it, um, these guys are full of water. So 95 to 100 degree sun beating down on this guy before it's completely established is not a good idea. Uh, another thing that I want to let you guys know, <clears throat> some of these fruit in nine months in climates like Houston, uh, Louis, uh, New Orleans. I see videos that uh, people grow them down in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Of course, Florida has mild temperatures even throughout the winter. But for us, you know, we, we really had the best of both worlds. We have the hot and we have the hot, we, we have the heat in the summer and then we have you know, those cool crisp nights in the wintertime. But uh, I really just wanted to show you guys that this is very simple. It's easy. And um, 
is something that you can do. Just a little background on bananas. Bananas cannot be grown from seed whatsoever. You have never, you've probably opened a banana and thought you've seen seeds, but that's not the way that they grow. Bananas um, are cloned. So what happens, this plant will grow. Just say if it was in the ground, it will grow to be probably, oh man, probably about a good six or seven feet tall. And what would happen is whenever the first frost came through, it would die all the way back down to the ground but those roots stay alive. It's a perennial plant. So the next spring, that banana is gone, but what happens is it produces what's called pups. That's what they call them, pups. And those start the next round of bananas in the spring of the following year after the uh, last frost sets in. So um, that's how bananas grow. And if you've ever noticed, whenever you see bananas, you always see more than one unless that is the first plant to go in the ground. So again, I said this was going to be a short video. I'm going to try to honor that. Um, just know that this thing does well anywhere. It don't matter if you're up north. You know, if you if you can do it, let it grow outside in a, in a pot or whatever and bring it in in the wintertime and you'll have your banana plant. So... I like to show you guys um, visualizations of what has happened over the course of time that these guys have been in the ground. So here it is, the Chiquita banana. Hopefully uh, it can go ahead and get about, let's see, I would love for it to get, honestly, I would love for it to get even with the pool table before, um, before winter time. So, Again, oh, and one last thing, I keep this guy indoors. So if I can keep it indoors and it survives, you guys can too. So go grab your banana plant. It is, it's very easy. As long as you, as long as you don't neglect this one and not water, it will continue to grow. That's all from the Suburban Grower today. I just wanted to update you guys on the banana plant and show you how it's doing. And uh, hopefully we can get another one going um, around the end of September, right before it starts getting those cool, misty nights. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, you guys.